everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new release 6 inch scale Ghostbuster figures from Mattel. Now, first of all, let me just say a big thanks to Nick for hooking me up with these so I could review them for you. There's four figures in the first wave. These are based on the upcoming movie with the all female cast. The packaging with all four figures is pretty much the same. It's a standardized packaging. You've got that neon green color at the top looking like slime. It tells us each uh, figure comes with a Collect and Connect Rowan piece. You've got the Ghostbusters symbol and then off to the side the Ghostbusters name. The figures are clearly displayed in the window box packaging. And then down below you have the names of the characters. So we've got Aaron Gilbert, Abby Yates, Patty Tolan, and Jillian Holtzman. So on the back of the packaging, it's exactly the same on all four figures. You've got that green slime dripping down at the top along with the Ghostbuster symbol. Off to the side, it shows you all four figures in the wave and it basically then shows you the Rowan Collect and Connect figure and tells you which piece comes with which figure. Okay, so let's get these open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside of the packaging. Now the figures, each figure comes with a proton pack, which you can take off the figure. When you take it out of the packaging, it's attached to their back, but you can take it off, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then each figure comes with the Collect and Connect Rowan piece. So we'll get to, we'll look at Rowan at the end, so we'll come back to that. But let's first take a look at each of the figures. So for the figures themselves, I actually think Mattel has done a pretty good job here. First of all, it doesn't look like they just reuse the same body mold for all four figures. They look very similar. They have, you know, all wear the same costume, but there's minor differences throughout all four figures. So I like that. And even the likenesses of the faces. Now, I, you know, I'm not super familiar with most of these actresses, so and I haven't been following the movie that much. I've seen the trailer once, and I wasn't terribly impressed. I mean, not because it's a female cast, but mostly from the trailer, it just looked like it was kind of a total ripoff on the first Ghostbuster movie. So I wasn't terribly impressed, and I guess a lot of you weren't because apparently the trailer for this movie has now now holds the record for having the most dislikes than any video on YouTube. So it doesn't really bode well that this is going to be a terribly successful movie. But nevertheless, I think Mattel has done a pretty nice job with the figures and, and the likenesses. As I said, there's minor differences throughout um, all four figures. So first of all, the size kind of varies. So you've got Patty Tolan as the tallest of the bunch. And then um, Aaron Gilbert, she's kind of the most petite of the bunch, it looks like. Abby Yates, I don't know. The likeness probably seems the most off to me on that one. Now, she's got the glasses, and the glasses are, are glued to the face, so they're not removable. And they've just got clear translucent plastic for the lenses. But just the overall look of her seems the most off as a, compared to the actual actress. And then the um, Julian Holtzman figure also has glasses. She has silver glasses with yellow tinted lenses as opposed to the clear tinted lenses. And they all have proton packs and the proton packs are removable. And the proton packs all appear to be uh, pretty much identical with each other. And I'll show you those in a minute. They've got these belts, these fluorescent orange belts with gray and some silver highlights on them. And those all pretty much appear to be exactly the same among all four figures. But you notice like on the shirts here, uh, so they all have breast pockets, so that's the same across the board. They all have their names which are painted on their shirts and those come out cleanly. You can clearly read them and they're not sloppy or anything. And the overall paint job on these figures, while not super detailed, there's not a lot of wash work or anything, it's pretty clean and crisp and not much in the way of, of paint errors that I've seen. But you'll see on these three figures, the, the collar is sculpted, uh, of the shirt is sculpted pretty much the same. But on, on this one, on the, on the Holtzman figure, it is, it is sculpted differently. So there, there's a difference. They've all got the striping in the midsection, the bright orange with the metallic silver striping. And it's also on their arms. They're, and you'll notice on Holtzman, the sleeves are rolled up, whereas on the others, they're not. And then on the Aaron Gilbert figure, the sleeves kind of come down right above the gloves. Same with uh, the Patty uh, Tolan figure, but on the Yates figure, they come all the way down to the glove. So that's another kind of minor difference. Then like on the legs, you'll see uh, Patty has these pockets as does Yates 
and then the other two do not have pockets on their pants. So just differences like that. And then just like even with like different like kind of folds in their outfit that are sculpted on there a little bit different when you really look closely at them. So again, I, I like that they didn't just reuse the same body mold on all four figures. Now, as I mentioned, the proton packs are exactly the same among all four figures, same paint applications and everything. So it's just kind of dark, it's not quite black, I'm not sure what color, a dark almost bronze metal type color and then they've got these little yellow dots up in the corner and that's basically it as far as paint applications go on the on the proton pack so the sculpting is pretty decent but not a whole lot in the way I would, th would think there would be more coloring I guess there is little red dots on each one down here in the bottom corner as well but again not much in the way of like lighting effects for now the proton packs have removable sticks so that each of the sticks have this little hole here in the corner and then they have this thing that sticks out so that you can plug it in so you can store it on the back which I like um, unlike the diamond select Ghostbuster figures I looked at the other day you know these stick to the back of the pack much better than than those diamond select ones so I definitely like that and they've got this a uh, wire that's done with this kind of flexible uh, rubber type material uh, it's actually more plastic than rubber I would say but it's definitely pretty flexible and then the stick itself not a whole lot of paint you know no real paint detail on the stick you've got this black this part here which is part of the handle that they hold on the stick is black but the rest is just that kind of uh, dark bronze type metallic color and I guess you got black here on the back part of the handle as well now as I mentioned the the packs are removable they just got these kind of uh, rubber uh, material type straps and so you just slide them over the arms if you want to take them off there's no kind of pegs or anything like that so you can remove them and again the, these straps are just kind of that rubber vinyl material and there's not really any detail on the um, inside part of the packs and then this is how the figures look they've got that copyright material on their back uh, written material on their backs like we always see with Mattel figures and you can get the figures to hold the sticks pretty well um, the sticks themselves are also made with kind of that rubber type material so they do kind of bend a little bit you know they can kind of be come out a little warped but you know they do have flexibility and you can get them in two-handed poses and just to give you an up-close look at the head sculpt for each one. I like the way the hair is sculpted on this one. You've got a little bit of wash work it looks like in the hair. It's done with a, a, a darker yellow type color for the blonde hair. Now all the figures seem to have this kind of uh, pink lipstick that they're wearing. I don't know if that's something they actually wear in the movie or if that's just something they did for the figures. And you also have the Ghostbuster symbol painted on their arm which again looks pretty clean and crisp so I like the way that looks and it's just on their right arm. And here's a close-up of the Yates figure. And again, I think this one is the most off-looking as opposed to comparing it to the actress. I just don't really think it looks that much like the actress. And part of it may just be the glasses throw it off a bit. The eyes on the Gilbert figure may be a little off to me. She looks a little star-eyed. Not really cross-eyed, but her eyes are very wide open. So it throws it off a little bit to me. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. Skin tone is good. I like the way the hair is sculpted. She's got the one ponytail on the back of her hair. So I think that looks pretty good. And then finally, the Tolan figure I think looks good. Looks pretty true to how she looks in the trailer, so no complaints there. She's got this weird red coloring throughout her hair. I suppose that's something that she has in the movie, but it looks a little weird on the figure. So articulation is the same on all four figures, and pretty much the same like we see with other six-inch lines from Mattel, like their DC Multiverse line. The head you can turn left and right. There's no real up or down movement with the head. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joint, so you can get the arms all the way out good and they've got pretty good rotation there there's no bicep swivel single hinged elbow so they can bend their elbows about that much and then they've got the rotation at the elbow swivels at the wrist but no hinges on the hands no midsection joint uh, do have waist swivel has that standard kind of side hinge t crotch design like we always see so they can do the splits good and get the legs forward good and you can do the legs back about that much. They do have thigh swivels, single hinge knee, so you can bend the knees about that much, and then you've got the hinges on the feet, so good up back and forth movement, no rotation though, and no ankle pivot, and two peg holes on the bottom of their feet. Okay, moving on to the Rowan Collect and Connect figure. It's very simple to put together. You just snap in the feet, and you just match up the, the 
piece on the leg with the hole in the in the body and again it just snaps into place same with the arms you just snap in the arms into place except make sure you don't put them on backwards and then you just pop the head on so the figure is a very uh, light figure it's mostly ho feels like it's mostly hollowed out plastic no real paint applications just white plastic you do have the red bow tie and then you have the black eyes and the black mouth with the kind of dingy white teeth I do like the way the teeth are sculpted and I like his little smile so according to Mattel they told Pixel Dan at Toy Fair this was going to be one of the main villains in the movie to me it looks like the ghost that you saw walking down the street in the old intro for the Ghostbusters cartoon um, so that's what it looks like to me but I assume this will be one of the major villains villain ghosts in the movie articulation is very simple on this figure you can turn the head to the left and the right there's no up or down movement you can rotate the arms but you can't do them out at all there's no elbow joint you can rotate the hands at the wrists there's no midsection type joint you can't move the legs at all so there's no movement with the legs and then you can rotate the feet and that's it and there's no peg holes on the bottom of the feet and because there's no movement with the feet you're kind of stuck with him standing in this kind of awkward position like he's walking forward I guess is what it's supposed to be so Rohan is about the same height as the other Ghostbuster figures he measures just a little bit over six inches if you count to the tip of his head maybe about six and a quarter inches tall Tolan remains the tallest of the bunch she is definitely a good six and a quarter inches tall the others uh, Yates measures just a little bit under six inches Holtzman measures right about six inches and Gilbert measures just a little bit under six inches. And sorry, I don't have any of the Mattel six inch original Ghostbuster figures, so unfortunately I can't give you a comparison with those. Okay, so that's my review. Overall, I would say these are not bad figures. They're, I wouldn't call them super detailed, but decent paint applications as far as no sloppiness or anything like that. I think for the most part, they look like they do in the movie, so no real complaints there. I like that the proton sticks actually stick to the packs and that you can actually remove the packs if you want to. So again, no real complaints. I don't know, you know, again, this movie, I don't really know how successful it's going to be. I have a feeling, good chance it's going to bomb, but you know, who knows, maybe we'll all be surprised and it'll end up being a really good movie. So these are hitting shelves now. You can pick them up pretty much any place that sells Mattel figures, but I think most uh, notably they're showing up at Walmart stores right now. We'll have a full gallery of images up at toynewseye.com. There'll be a link in the description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on my Facebook and or Twitter pages. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Oh, 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 oh,